everybody um, and welcome to today's program. I'm here with uh, my boss, the Deputy Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, and uh, my two brothers, uh, Baba Sadiq and Rex Omar. Um, we're here, uh, for me it's not a debate, it's a conversation, because we believe that we've done enough to frontline conversations around tourism, arts and culture. And that is the reason why we have this historic day for the first time having a debate at Joy FM on the creative arts economy. And over the last seven years, under the impressive leadership of Nana Dudankwe Kufuado, we've seen tremendous growth in the sector. And we believe that, um, inshallah, when Dr. Mahmoud Baumia takes over, the next administration will even do better and continue to position the tourism sector. So we have our presentation in two parts. First, I want to play a video. Thank you. Over the last seven years, the new patriotic party, the NPP, has made significant strides aiming to position Ghana as a cultural and tourism hub in Africa. In 2016, the NPP laid out an ambitious plan for the tourism and creative arts sector. Key promises included the establishment of a creative arts council and a fund, the empowering of the Ghana Tourism Authority to promote Ghana as a prime tourism destination, the construction of new theatres, enhancing diaspora engagement, improving tourism infrastructure, among others. The party established the Creative Arts Council, which provided the platform for engagement with the creative arts sector and oversaw the passage of the Creative Arts Act which has birthed for the first time the Creative Arts Agency. The NPP also set up the National Film Authority, which has been at the forefront of the development of the film sector. Creative Arts Fund was a major promise. It aimed to provide financial support to artists and creative enterprises, fostering growth and innovation in the sector. The promises for this is currently ongoing. Another significant promise was the construction of theatres in major capitals intended to boost local arts and provide venues for performances and events. Fast forward to today, the theatre in Koforidia has been completed and is now a hub for cultural performances. Construction of amphitheatres in Kumasi, Takuradi, Tamale and Accra are well underway, showcasing the NPP's commitment to their promises. In 2020, the NPP promised to build a world-class convention and exhibition center at the Ghana Trade Fair company site in La and to implement tax incentives to attract private sector investments. The convention center construction is underway. This convention and exhibition center is a game changer. When completed, it will be one of the largest of its kind globally, attracting international events and boosting tourism and the arts. The NPP's efforts have also led to the promotion of cultural festivals and tourist attractions. Initiatives like the Year of Return in 2019 brought global attention to Ghana, significantly boosting tourism and the creative arts. December in GH, created by the Ghana Tourism Authority GTA in 2019, has become a platform for our creatives. Events like Afrofuture, Little Havana, Rhythm on the Runway, Wilderland, Exoterra have all been supported by government through the Ghana Tourism Authority and have benefited the sector operators, event organizers, musicians, sound engineers, MCs, bandsmen, among others. The improvement of the operations of the Ghana Tourism Authority has been pivotal. The Authority's initiatives include the development of an extensive framework aimed at improving infrastructure at tourist hotspots, streamlining services, and enhancing marketing efforts to attract international visitors. This has resulted in an upsurge of tourist arrivals, helping local economies. Last year, the country welcomed 1.148 million visitors. Through the See Ghana, Eat Ghana, Wear Ghana initiative, domestic tourism has also grown significantly, reaching a record 1.4 million in 2023. Tourism sector contribution to GDP hovers around $3.8 billion, benefiting SMEs and several players in the value chain. Another MPP promise was the improvement of tourism infrastructure. Through this, sites that have been upgraded over the last seven years include the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, the Accra Tourism Information Center Phase 2, including where Gold Coast Restaurant operates which has become a hub for the arts, Kintampo Waterfalls, Tafi Atome Monkey Sanctuary, Salada Slave Market, Bonvier Kente Museum, Odrianoma Park Gladding Site, Bunso Eco Park, Picro Slavery Camp. Works are ongoing in Tano Obwasa Sacred Grove, Dejira Techerere Eco Park, 
Nationalism Park, and the Geisha Park all in Accra. Furthermore, the NPP's focus on international partnerships have paved the way for collaborations with global tourism and cultural organizations like NAACP, Grammys, Ebony and Essence have all been engaged in collaboration with the country. As we look back on the NPP's promises and achievements, it's clear that significant progress have been made. The journey continues with ongoing projects and new initiatives aimed at further transforming Ghana's tourism, creative arts and culture sector. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of Ghana's cultural renaissance. Over the last... Thank you very much and welcome back. Uh, let's go for a short commercial break. As we introduce, <laughs> we believe we've done enough um, and so we have 15 minutes. So let's hear it out. Creative arts sector. Yeah, so that is Tia, produced by Mark Okrikumante, and you know he does it always with the best. But now we go to the plan, the NPP, based on the solid foundation laid over the past seven years, has a plan and has made commitments for the next chapter. So commitment number one is to set up Ghana as a conference and exhibition destination through a conference facility. Currently, there's work ongoing at the Ghana International Trade Fair site, and I believe that Joy FM, Joy Prime will help us go there, show Ghanaians the amount of work that is going on there to build a world-class international uh, conference facility so that we can really be the MICE destination that we say we want to be. And then we also have promised to implement travel protocol services to support artists, performers, and other deserving creatives. We know the challenge that our uh, brothers and sisters in the creative fraternity go through when they have to travel. And in this global space that we are, government under the MPP will be providing support services through the travel protocol services, the TPS. Importantly, we want to provide tax incentives and funding to stimulate private sector investments in the arts. This we have done before under President Kufo, and in the next NPP government, the next chapter, we are going to uh, stimulate the industry with tax incentives to grow. Then we are going to set up a cultural fund to provide sustainable funding. To provide sustainable funding. Uh, for the cultural um, players, people within the chieftaincy institutions and then also the creative uh, art space. We said we are going to isolate Ghana's aviation potential by intensifying efforts to establish a national airline. And our, our speaker, uh, guest speaker, was emphatic on that. And so under the MPP, next chapter, you are going to see that our vice president, the flag bearer, has already mentioned the construction of the Cape Coast Airport in the Upper East. We want to um, for those of you who have visited uh, Kotoko International Airport in recent times, you see the sort of uh, pressure that is there. So over there, we want to construct a multi-story car park to make sure that it opens up really and make sure that we can uh, have all the people coming in. And then the extension of the Kumasi Airport runway is part of that aviation um, growth that we want to see because that is also a support pillar for the tourism and the art sector. Commitments continue. We want to maximize opportunities around copyright, uh, preserve heritage by working with relevant stakeholders to embark on a massive 
archival project to protect our historic films and documents. Already work has started under this government where we've paid for um, some of the films that are locked up elsewhere and we want to bring them in so that we can archive all our works. That work is currently ongoing. Firstly, tracking, collection, and distribution of royalties to enable creatives assess and manage revenues. This we are doing because we want to help our brother Rex Omar so the people don't uh, continue to say Rex hasn't paid us our royalties. Uh, uh, commitments continue. We want to introduce a visa-free policy for nationals of African and Caribbean countries visiting Ghana. We've done it before with a year of return. Now Ghana is a Pan-African hub, and we believe that with a visa-free policy for the global African family, that will really bring them in and uh, solidify Ghana's reputation. The soft power, when I talk about soft power, Ghana's cultural heritage and the level that it's gone through, based on things like this, the year of return, beyond the return, is something that we want to continue. And then also implement an e-visa policy for international visitors to simplify and speed up the acquisition process. Use technologies to create new jobs in tourism, creative arts, and sports, and establish regional creative hubs to foster innovation and collaboration in the creative arts sector. These are commitments that we have made in our recently launched manifesto. And we've done it before, and so definitely there is cause to believe that this will be done under a strong MPP government in the next chapter. Uh, commitments continue to provide incentives, including fact, flat tax rates, to motivate private sector investment in the arts and tourism facility. This is something that is well thought out. It's based on engagements with stakeholders, and we believe that it will help. And importantly, establish a national hospitality training school to prioritize training and upscaling. When we were promised in 2016 that we were going to revive HotCut, uh, opponents said it's not possible. We did. HotCut is revived, and now they are training people, and now we are going to even go a notch further by setting up a national hospitality training school. Develop a policy to make Ghana a strategic medical tourism hub through PPPs. We know that medical tourism is growing. India, Dubai, Turkey are now taking the lead, and we want to be there as well. Thankfully, under the Agenda 111 project. Hospitals are going to be everywhere. And so medical tourism is something that can grow. And then also accelerate the ongoing investments in the coastal sea defense programs to protect communities. Beachfront development is important, but we know that a lot of uh, beachfronts, because of the uh, tidal waves, have been, are being washed away. And so we've seen the sort of sea defense project that has been undertaken under this government, and that is also going to be part of the framework for our tourism and arts development. Enhance diplomatic relations with the Caribbean through diplomatic missions. We've done it. Now when you go, by, you go to the Caribbean, Ghana is the number one destination in Africa. And we believe that establishing diplomatic relationships will help position Ghana even further. Um, we've, we've passed a diaspora engagement policy and we are going to continue with it. Implementation of the Beyond the Return in December and GH programs. And here I want to highlight that this is one thing that I was quite um, disappointed not seeing it in the manifesto of uh, brothers and sisters in the NDC because everybody can attest that December in GH is something that has really, really uh, positioned Ghana globally. And so I would have expected that they would say, oh, they will continue what the MPP started. But let's hear them. Maybe they have different ideas, but I believe that the MPP has promised that December and GH will stay under an MPP government so that the creative industry, all the event organizers, people within the value chain will benefit. Explore partnership with the private sector for gold tourism. And so one of the things that we want to do is to set up a gold museum. Um, the conversations have gone on with um, players within the gold mining industry, and I think some in attracting tourists from the new markets like Asia, uh, to increase global tourism market share. And finally, uh, enhance economic ties using after AFCFTA. We, uh, under the MPP, managed to get it hosted here, and we believe that it provides a perfect platform to build on to make sure that we boost Ghana-made products and services and strategically integrate the road network with other modes of transport. We've done the railways to Mpakadan, which really opens up that size. If you go to Akosombo, the number of um, hotels that are here, uh, Peninsula, St. Chi, Bridge uh, View, and all that. So we need a railway to support the road network, and we believe that we have shown commitment to be able to open up the country through road and railway. 
Finally, and in conclusion, the goals and commitments for Ghana's creative and arts and tourism sector aims to drive economic growth, one, create jobs, and enhance the nation's cultural and global presence. Yes, a quarter cast of amount to my TDD. We've done it before over the last eight years. We've shown commitment to the sector, and it's very clear that when it comes to tourism, arts, and culture, the MPP is tops. And we believe that the combined benefits of job creation, economic growth, cultural preservation, enhanced accessibility, skill development, and global presence underscores a transformative vision for Ghana's future. Our next president, Dr. Baumia, means business. Thank you for listening.